Okay, as we continue our look ahead to the Indian Premier League, it's uh, my pleasure to welcome Chetan Narula to the show. Chetan, hello to you. Hi, John. And you're going to be sort of uh, following a lot of the teams in your area, which is sort of Delhi and uh, some of the other teams. Are you looking forward to the IPL this year? Absolutely, John, because uh, it is one of the most important uh, seasons for the Indian Premier League. Um, the Indian cricket has been on a bit of a down curve since the World Cup victory last season. And uh, it remains to be seen if people will come to the Indian Premier League or will uh, take to the Indian Premier League like uh, they have done in the last four seasons. What is, what is also important is that because the Indian team has been using a lot, uh, the finances of the board are no longer in the best position as they would have been earlier. And we've also had this uh, fiasco over Kochi Tuskers, Kerala being abolished or in fact being banned from the IPL. And the, the franchise doesn't exist anymore altogether. They're still challenging the BCCI. But uh, a lot of things have happened off the field and it remains to be seen whether people will again come back and take to what is going to happen on the field. So in that particular sense, so, you know, with all the finances concerned, all the TV ratings and all the cricket that's been, been played before this and that's going to be played now, it remains to be seen how the Indian Premier League will, uh, will, will cater to its fans this year. Absolutely, and we'll find out over the next sort of six or seven weeks. Now let's uh, just focus on some of the teams that obviously are still playing, starting off with your home team, the Delhi Daredevils. Many people are sort of giving them favourite status, and it's not too difficult to see why with players such as Verenda Sewag, David Warner, and of course our very own Kevin Peterson now turning out for them. Yes, I think Delhi Daredevils have uh, made some interesting purchases over the off-season, and um, you know you already have it in the Sehwag and uh, David Warner there and we thought last year that they, they missed the firepower in the middle order but this year as I said they have uh, they have brought in some interesting players you have uh, Mahila Jairadme who's coming in you have Monin Nokal who's coming in you have Kevin Peter who's coming in so uh, these three players especially and you also have Andrew Russell and Ross Taylor coming in so you know three or four five good players have been brought in they spend their money very, very wisely, and you already have uh, Irfan Patan and Warner and Tehwag in the mix. So you put all of them together, and they have a good batting order now. Remember the Delhi of four, you had Tilak Ramadeshan, you had Sehwag, Gambhir, and uh, a couple more other players, uh, Amy De Villiers, and a couple more other players in the middle order. You know, you, you knew that their batting was very strong, but last year, because of, uh, the, because of the pool of players, again, you know, getting all together, and the auction taking place from, from, from point zero, uh, they lost out probably there and uh, the batting was not very strong and it was felt all over. Even the captain, Vera the Sevak, said so. But this year they've made some very important purchases and uh, yes, I think they are good to go again. They, they will be one of, uh, one, of, one of the good challenges this year. Now, moving on to the Rajasthan Royals. Uh, no shame worn anymore. Ross Taylor's departed, as you just mentioned. Rahul Dravid is the new captain. So plenty of changes for them to deal with. And would it be fair to say that if they should reach the playoffs, uh, that would be something of an upset? Well, yes, I think uh, they've always been the perennial underdogs of uh, the Indian Premier League. Even when they started out and they won, they won the tournament for the first time, it was, it was a bit of a surprise, really. And, uh, you know, Shane Warne and Rahul Dravid are two different personalities altogether. I mean, both of them are cricket legends, but uh, both of them totally different, you know. You have uh, Shane Warne on the one hand, who's a bit of a mercurial, mercurial, mercurial cricketer, and he's, uh, his, his, his techniques and his ways of going about things is totally different from what you would expect of somebody like Rahul Dravid. And, of course, they've lost a couple of players as well. As he said, Ross Taylor gone now. And um, they're missing a few uh, missing a few players from uh, last year as well. Again, Shane Warne, a very, very important role he played, you know, when he used to bowl his uh, four overs. And so, in that particular sense, yes, Rajasthan have become. They, they're they going to be, again, on a new approach altogether. But um, it would be, it would be you know, a mistake to, to think that they are not going to be challenged because Rajasthan has brought about this, um, this idea of never giving up. They're the one team that you can say, okay, they never give up. And if Rahul Ravid can inculcate that as much as Shane Warne could, you know, probably he has the same idea in a different way than Shane Warne. But if he can bring that forward from the Rajasthan players, yes, Rajasthan will again be a force to challenge. But at this moment, yes, it will be a little bit too much to expect for them to challenge for the top honours. 
Now, what about the uh, Kings 11 Punjab? For me, they've rather flattered to deceive in the IPL so far. The odd good performance, but not really strong. Good runs are formed together. A very strong Australian presence to their side. The likes of Adam Gilchrist and Sean Marsh, who've uh, produced uh, some wonderful performances over the years. They've also got Azam Mahmood, uh, a former Pakistan international, something of a rarity in the IPL. Uh, what about their chances this year? Well, Azhar Mahmood has an English passport, is what I hear. So he's probably an English English cricketer now, for all for all who are concerned here, because we don't really have Pakistan players playing in the IPL. But having said that, yes, he is one player who will bring a lot to the table. He has a he has a vast experience of this format of the game. He is a very useful player, both batting and bowling. And obviously, you have Adam Gilchrist, who's now their captain, as well as their coach. And then there's always Sean Marsh. So top heavy, yes, as always. But again, you know, their, their problem last week, they also have David Hussey and Praveen Kumar, Stuart Broad has been uh, ruled out because of injury. Uh, they have the right mix of, uh, you know, your uh, experience, your foreign players and your youth players, but somehow they have never really stepped up to the plate. Uh, Kings 11 always have those couple of missing links uh, and not really sure whether they have been able to, uh, to, to bridge those gaps in their squad. They, they have the right mix of... Uh, of, of foreign players and the youngsters from the Indian pool. But again, you know, just to expect them to, to bridge that gap and to take that next step and go on to uh, to challenge for the honours would, would, would be a little bit uh, too much to expect. I think one player we could we could really say that uh, is a player to watch out for is Abhishek Nair. And he's been knocking on uh, on national selection doors for quite a while now. We had Paul Rolkati last year. He took, took the IPL by storm, but really never really saw him coming to the national colours. But again, Abhishek Nayan has been deemed as an all-rounder now. He's, he's played some crucial innings in, in, the Ranji, in the Ranji tournament this year, in the domestic tournament this year. So maybe if he can just step up to the plate uh, in a bit of an all-rounder capacity, lower down the order, or bowl come overs, uh, maybe things will happen. They, they, need, they need more than one player. Uh, Paul Hattie made a uh, splash for them last year. They need more than one player to do that consistently. Um, Gilchrist and Marsh went off-colour, on-colour, uh, so they need two or three players who need to consistently perform throughout the tournament for them to make a challenge. They have a good mix, but it just doesn't uh, really kick for them. And uh, finally, the Kolkata Knight Riders, they showed some very good signs last year. That So many class players in their line at Gautam Gumbir, Jacques Callis, Yusuf Patan, Brendan McCullum returning to those colours as well. Surely they're going to be up there once again. Well, yes, I think they already had a, had a you know, slew of... Uh, Fantastic players last season, you name them, you know, Yusuf Patan, Gautam Gambir, Jack Callis, Brett Lee. Uh, and, you know, when you bring back somebody like uh, uh, Bryn McCullum, he adds more firepower. They already had Brad Haddon, but he's now maturing in the West Indies. But, you know, Bryn McCullum comes in to, to take over his responsibility. Bryn McCullum played a fantastic knock for them uh, when the IPA started. We remember that all. All of us remember that 2008. So we know uh, how ballistic he can get. And, you know, they have already have so many good names. And you add on to them, so they definitely start as one of the favourites. But the problem with Kolkata Knight Riders is that they always underperform. And uh, we are yet to see if uh, they can, this time, uh, take that aspect out of their cricket and uh, perhaps uh, challenge more. I think uh, uh, a few more players, uh, you know, when, when you have uh, Sunil Narayan and uh, you have Eoin Morgan, I'm not sure how much uh, cricket uh, Eoin Morgan will play for them. But you have Sunil Narayan and Iqbal Abdullah, two, two spin bowlers as well. I think uh, Eden Van Pitch is uh, a bit of a slower one. And for them to uh, have these two spinners as their strength, I think that could be one of, uh, one of the important aspects of Kolkata Knight Riders' strategy this season. Uh, but again, as I said, they will start as one of the firm favourites this year. And it's the only aspect that they need to take care of is about underperforming. And if they can all just chip in regularly, uh, I am pretty sure that at least the semi-final place is guaranteed for the call for the Knight Riders. Now, it's a marathon, not a sprint, the IPL, but we're going to ask you for an overall prediction at this very early stage. Which team would you sort of throw your hat on right now to say, I think they're going to win? Well, I think it's very, as you said, you know, it's very early to put in, uh, put in one particular name, but... Uh, uh, I would say if I would pick four for the semi-finals at this early stage, um, it would be Kolkata, Bangalore, Chennai, and uh, probably uh, a toss-up between Mumbai or Delhi because Mumbai have just had a change in their leadership with Harbhajan Singh coming, so we don't really know how they're going to perform mm -hmm. because we saw Harbhajan do very well in the Champions League T20. So 
either of these five teams uh, might pick, I would say, the favorites, Kolkata Knight Riders. At this particular time, they have a very good team, they have a very good squad, they have jailed well over last year, no changes in captain team, no nothing, they still have a couple more players coming in and um, they've always underperformed. So maybe this is the season when Kolkata Knight Riders step up to the plate. For me, yes, Kolkata Knight Riders. And uh, what about a prediction for the first game of the tournament, Chennai Super Kings take on the Mumbai Indians in repeat of the 2010 final, of course? Well, they're playing at home, so Chennai, I would say, would look for a fast start. I would say Chennai Super Kings for this run, because again, you know, Mumbai is just changing about their captaincy for, uh, at the moment. So, yes, uh, Chennai for me. Good stuff. Thank you very much, Chetan. We'll speak uh, as the tournament goes on.